All right. Love that logo. What? Are we preying? Pre. Oh, I'm gonna pre. I'm preying. <laughs> we are currently preying. Oh, we're on screen for this part too. Can you currently pre? <laughs> Is that like nowing? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna now. No, I'm gonna soon. I'm gonna soon. Oh. I posted. <laughs> and she's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Why do you well, have to say words? It's like, please leave. <laughs> I asked you to be quiet. Remain silent. We'll do this. Just don't talk to me. Meanwhile, you're already post. Little does she know. <laughs> or, you know, she always knows. We always know. Unless we don't, and then we just make it up. I don't even know what you I'm know talking about You know when it's anymore. business time? I don't, but I'm sure other people do. Why don't you know? I don't know anything. The hell? The only thing I know about is video games, and only a certain number of them, and only a certain franchise. I also know a lot about The Simpsons, seasons 1 to 8. 1 to 8 now? Yeah. And I also know a lot I about... I 11 before. I don't know. I'm not as strong with those other seasons. And I know a lot about birds. Are we going to do one of these about birds some night? I mean, if you want to. I mean, you'd have to do all the, the talking. Oh, God. Actually, that's fine. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. This shirt, like, do I pull it up so you can see that it's a Dallas Fuel jersey? Or do I pull it down so it's like fitting normally, but then you can't, you can't see anything? You, you let it fit normally, because otherwise it's all bunched up on you and it looks stupid. You look stupid. I didn't say you look stupid, I said that looks stupid. Wow. Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Oh my god. That's so much. <laughs> what? Shaper? What's up, Captain Codfish? Oh, snap. He's up in this piece. I'm always up in pieces. Oh fuck, I'm so hungry. Why did that make me hungry? Pieces. Up in pieces? Reese's, Reese's pieces? pieces? Pizza? Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Like right before we started streaming, I scrolled past a picture of a pizza slice. Oh. I'm so bad with that stuff. It's like, oh, I hear I hear. I see a piece of food <laughs> on fucking. Oh, I hear a internet. pizza. You can probably hear a pizza. I bet you could. It's still a funny phrase. Oh, I heard a pizza last night. It sounded real good. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Marty Kins? Ah, uh, nice, Lord. Are you on lunch break, Rev? Eating at your desk? Eating your desk? I'm waiting for more people to get here because I have a funny story. Eyebrows? My eyebrows? Shit. I like sculpted them and everything. I don't draw my eyebrows, you know? Like I can do this whole thing and like nothing comes off or anything. But I use like a clear gel on them sometimes just cause like they're kind of unruly. And like this one wants to arch like crazy and this one just wants to not arch. This is like information you guys don't care about or need to know about. Hey, but... you know what? This fair me mentioned it. So clearly she does want to know. And I want to know, Bin Bash TV is claiming to be the pizza whisperer exactly what does that mean does that mean you get them to do your bidding does that mean you are able to train them because if so how much does it cost for you to train them to go into my mouth more often I, uh, I hey what's wrong with mine wait a minute did you groom them before we started streaming yes you didn't do it well enough 
Manscaped. I was the manager of a Domino's Pizza back in the day. It was good times, actually. Oh, duh. Shaper, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course it's happening. But... Um, so being the manager of the Domino's was a good time because why? Tell us pre-show. Um, I don't know, because I get to fuck around a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you guys know I love fucking around. Um, like, I had a lot of responsibility and whatever, but, like, and, like, everybody who worked with me was, like, in high school or just out of high school, like me. And it was fun to be, like, in charge of people occasionally. But my style of leadership is more like, hey, guys, please fuck around with me all day, but do just enough work so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> so we were doing shit like um, making, like, experiment pizzas. Like, we had this convenience store next door, and we went and got, like, this can of, like beefaroni or something like chef boyardee shit we put that on a pizza and it was amazing well apparently i didn't get to try it but and then uh i was making uh we'd have like excess dough that would dry out so we couldn't sell it or whatever so i know i have pictures of pr as proof but i'd uh like shape them into like giant dicks and then i'd uh, <laughs> put them through the oven so they'd get like really big like like my whole arm is a dick with balls on it and then um i would fill it up with uh alfredo sauce um, and then you know, Why? the Alfredo sauce represent. I don't know. I just thought it'd be nice to have a cream filling. <laughs> and then I'd give it to my mom. I'd be like, "Oh, mom, I made you a pizza." And then I'd hand her the box, and it'd be like yet another dick. Yet another dick, because your mother was very accustomed to this. Yeah. Wait, are you say my mom knows how to take a dick? Is that it? Nope. Fight you, you motherfucker. <laughs> I will fight you. I wouldn't know anything about that. Hey, Amen. So, okay, I'm gonna tell my story now. Tell your story. We have like 10 minutes. Okay, so it's just kind of funny because it's funny. So my Nana is my grandmother and she's my maternal grandmother. And my Papa is my grandfather, my okay. mom's parents. And uh, sometimes when I say Nana and Papa, people think that I'm talking about mom and dad. I don't get that, but you know, it's, I think it's just like- People the just way don't use that term, yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, um, they're like, like my favorite people on the planet. And, uh, my Nana has this condition and I forget what it's called and I forget what it does exactly. Cause like I try to block out stuff that scares the shit out of me from my mind, but she's got this condition yeah. where like, she's slowly like building up. I think it's like cataracts or something. Like it's, it's basically something that, um, if left untreated would leave her blind, you know? Um, wow. Yeah, so that really, really sucks. But luckily, they caught it really quick, and they can give her some procedures um, over the course of, like, a year or so to make it go away eventually. Um, but the, the problem is, though, like, um, the procedures have to start, like, like, twice a week, and then eventually once a week, and then eventually every couple weeks, and then eventually every, like, month or whatever. And it's far away from her house, and it's basically getting needles stuck in her eye every that few days. That is fucked up. Yeah, so it fucking sucks. So my papa uh, drives my nana to the procedures with my mom um, because my papa isn't into that stuff. Like he's like me, it's like he's grossed out. Like he yeah. wants to go and be supportive, but yeah. he can't deal with it. Um, so my mom goes and she's like, she doesn't give a, like she's really interested in like gross medical stuff and whatever, so she's fine. So anyway, my Nana's being a fucking champ. Like, she's taking the fucking needles to the eye like nobody's business or whatever. And so, um, they've been going for a few months now, and, um, my Nana's really into the internet. Like, as soon as she got a computer, she was all over the internet. She, like, it was back in the day, she's, like, looking at the Paris Hilton sex tape and then the <laughs> Kardashian sex tape. Like, she doesn't care. Um, and my Papa doesn't know anything about the internet at all, but what he loves to do is, like, talk to people and, like, you know, just be friendly and stuff like that. So, um, my mom and my nana are sitting in the waiting room and it's completely packed and it's taking a really, really long time because there's so many people there and everybody's just quiet and everybody's sick and whatever. And my pop is, you know, gone doing somewhere. Um, so anyway, my nana turns to my mom and she goes, have you seen those wild sex videos on the internet? <laughs> My mom looks at my Nana and she's like, <laughs> what? 
and the the old woman next to my nana like you know like and everybody's like you know it's a oh, I never <laughs> exactly um so my mom's like what and my nana's like you know those wild sex videos of animals having sex and then she goes into this whole like spiel about like all these weird like animal sex videos that she's been watching and just like you know how weird animal dicks are and stuff like that so um my papa comes back because he figures the procedure's over and everything but it's not they're still waiting and uh so he proceeds to like go around the room and sort of like tell his life story to everybody who's interested and like of course some people aren't um but uh he's just talking and talking and talking and so my mom goes to the bathroom when she she's on her way back to the waiting room uh, an old lady's like, Oh, are you the daughter from out of town? And my mom's like, Who are you? What? <laughs> and uh, the lady's like, Oh, you must be the, the one uh, from around here. I was talking to your father. So uh, evidently, my papa went around telling everybody like about his daughters and about his life and you know basically everything he could within the time limit that he was standing there, I guess. I don't know. So I don't know. So is that that's but that's both part of his personality and a coping mechanism, right? I guess I don't know. That's what he does all the time. Yeah, but yeah, they're just they're just like that. Like I for years what now. A quirky couple. I, I love know. it. And I just I think it's cool because like when I was growing up, they had to be kind of like grandparents, you know, and and but eventually like the whole like I'm an adult and you're a kid facade kind of broke away and. It's becoming more and more evident that, like, my weird sense of humor is hereditary. Like, it's, you know, I've sort of inherited this kind of thing. Like, my favorite thing to do, my Nana still has, like, a landline. And then she's got this little, like, uh, pad of paper uh, next to the thing. What are those things? Post-it notes. Yeah. And every time I go over, I drop penis on a post-it note, and then I hide it somewhere <laughs> in her house. <laughs> then eventually, she'll send me a message. She'll be like, Jesse, I found a penis on my refrigerator. And like, oh, it took you long enough. Yeah. She's cool. Do you usually put it in an obvious place, or do you, like, hide it? No, I place? hide it. She's fucking... She's spry. She'll spot that shit. <laughs> P.S. She thought that Kim Kardashian was faking it. I think she was probably she really right. analyzed that. Why not, right? <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, let's go to pre-show. We are in or, pre-show. Let's go to um, the the transition line. between yes, the pre transition. and coming. Yes, pre and now. We'll pre see you on the other side, but you'll still hear us anyway.
Oh, hello there. Hi, what's up? What's going on? Hey, welcome back. Oh, look. Hey, look. Look at all these people. Hey, guys. It's Friday. It's what? It's Friday. I hear that it's best to get down on Friday. Or at least you have to. You gotta, in fact. Hmm. Must you? Yeah. Gotta have my bowl. Necessary. Gotta have cereal. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. So, everybody, welcome back. It is the LB stream episode 48. Tonight we're doing weird news. Oh. That's why I'm putting extra close to the, mic. to the mic. Wow, no, to the camera. That's a camera. This is a mic. Dusting off this old chestnut. This uh, this content we definitely did not steal from anything. This is a completely uh, unique um, thing that we've created. Pulling up weird news uh, and you know reading it and commenting on it like no other <laughs> podcast does that shit right. and they never have so i know that you guys are super stoked to see this and of course we've never done this before either like this is the first time we're doing it we have definitely not done this three times already <laughs> um just quickly um we have a new bot that will remind people that this is not the lagging balls podcast this is the lbs it's completely different on the lagging balls podcast we talk about blizzard games and it is audio only it's available on uh, such fine streaming sites as soundcloud and you can get it on itunes and stitcher um this however this is not a podcast this is just a stream you'll be able to find the vods here on twitch and on youtube but this is not about blizzard games this is just an excuse for us to hang out for a little while on friday yes. with you guys um because it's Friday. Yeah. You and, job, and you got shit to do. Exactly. And I'm just, I'm stressing this because um, I hate when uh, I have to explain, like, people come up to me and they're like, oh, I love your podcast, but I thought it was, a, I thought you were talking about Blizzard games. And I'm like, and they're like, oh, I heard you like your podcast. You were talking about like weird fetishes. I thought you talked about Blizzard games. And I'm like, <laughs> well, you see. <laughs> Yeah, so this is just to, to avoid some confusion, and I definitely am regretting calling this the LBS, but it's too late now. So See, we've got. See what happened was, we could really get caught up talking about weird fetishes on really either show, which is why some of the confusion also happens. Yeah, but we don't talk about Blizzard games here because if we did, then we'd have nothing to talk about on our show. So right. here, we rehash old ideas that we totally came up with all oh, on yeah. our own. Total rehashing ideas of our own. Yeah. Uh, right. And in another note, uh, we want to give a shout out to Venaro. Um, yeah, our boy Venaro. Our boy, um, he's going through some stuff at the moment, but he will pull through it, and everything will be fine. Fuck yeah! And uh, we'll see him again shortly. But we just wanted to shout out to him if he can see this at some point, and if odd or whatever, um, we care about you. We're rooting for you, and um, kick some ass, bro. You got this. It's fine, and we're all behind please you. Send nudes. Oh, please send nudes. Wait, when you're back, when you're able. send us nudes, or we send him nudes? Yes. So it's like a mutual nude sending. Right. See, that's it's the best rumba. scenario, you know? It's like, nudes are kind of like currency. It's like, okay, I will send you one nude and a half, <laughs> or, okay, no, I will send you two almost nudes for one whole nude. I think that's fair, you know? Does that make sense? Because does. He, and, well, I mean, I don't know what the exact currency exchange is, but yes, it, the, the fact that there would be one, that there's an arrangement for these that you have to, you know, tit for tat, if you would. Exactly. Tat being the scientific term. Um, yeah, which, yeah. speaking of, if you're not a part of our Discord, speaking of nudes, um, uh, you should definitely check that out as well. We've got the links to all the stuff that we've been mentioning straight down. Um, so if you're in the Twitch for the first time, scroll on down. We've got a, a, a section for links, including the Discord. You should get up in there. We've got the Nudes channel as well, um, which is always a good time. Um, personally, I think I love the Memes channel. That's among the, my f most favorite channels. Uh, the Selfies channel is fucking awesome. That's so much fun all the time. Um, and a lot of really great personalities in there, including some that you would recognize. Oh, yeah. So, we've got there. straight up celebrities in our Discord, by the way. Yep. You just gotta find them and send them nudes. Frasley <laughs> knows about selfies. It's a Frasley. <laughs> um, yeah, so why don't we get down to it? Yes, let's. Up to it or, you know, round to it. Sure. Do you want to tell everybody how this is going to work? 
Ugh, sorry, I had an eyelash in my eye, and my I dealt with that by making a weird face. Um, okay, <laughs> so I have some odd news from the internet, things that have actually happened, um, and Thorn has not seen these, and I'm going to read the article, and then once we have read the art- article entirely, we can all talk about it. We can all, you know, sort of look at it from all sides, give our opinion, try to suss out what happened, Push maybe, yeah. Um, we just we just want to figure out, we want to get to the bottom of these cases, you know? Like, they've already been solved, but we need to know. We need to talk these through, because this is important. Like, this is a real reflection on humanity, and mm. we are the smartest, most bestest people to figure that out. Absolutely. Um, some of this stuff is a little dark and sad and like we're, we're definitely trying not trying to like you know make fun of people in bad situations or anything like that but you have to admit this is odd news so let's start with the first one shall we are you ready Thorn? I'm ready okay here is the title body turns out to be a sex doll police say Body reported near an Ohio forest preserve Thursday afternoon turned out to be a sex doll, police said. County engineers. That's kind of good. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said they saw what they thought was a body wrapped in a garbage bag on a hillside near Richard Forest Preserve. Um, Responding officers and. Yeah. Responding officers initially had trouble getting to the site. Police called a coroner to the scene. When the coroners removed the body, they found a life sized female sex doll. From a distance, authorities said the doll looked (laughs) lifelike. Well, I should hope it looks lifelike. Those things are like five thousand dollars. <laughs> like they're really expensive, and they come in this giant crate. Well, if you got like the good kind, you know, like the the good kind. Have you guys ever been I forget, <laughs> real doll? That's I think real doll is like the leading maker of real dolls, and of course I know all about this because that's the kind of thing that I know about. Um, but it's kind of cool because like you can go on their website and you can like customize your own doll like you pick like a like a template like that really think that we should but you pick a template and uh you can add to it and then you can add like all of the features there's male and female dolls um some look more realistic than others some look very cartoony on purpose um but they're literally like you know human sized and really huge and um yes they absolutely would look like a real body from far away especially if they were wrapped in a garbage bag like that's creepy Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, a real doll um, sponsor. But yes, that's creepy as hell because uh, if the whole point is for it to look lifelike, I mean, Jesus. I know. I'm not surprised that they actually thought. I know. would definitely call the cops because, like, if I saw something that looked like a body, I would not go near it, you know? Like, there's no way, no way I would just call the cops. I wouldn't care. And, like, a real doll definitely would look like a body from far away. But uh, it's interesting because, like, there's this. Um, documentary on YouTube about people who live, like, choose to live with dolls and be in relationships with dolls and stuff. And uh, there's this dude, and his job, his only job in life, is to repair um, real doll junk because it gets worn out, um, you know, because it's made of latex. So eventually, with enough friction, you know, like how stones are really smooth underneath, like, flowing water. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so people, like, have to send their real dolls to him, and then he switches that stuff out and sends them back. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, that's too bad, because that's, like, that's a lot of money. And, like, why would somebody do that? Like, why wouldn't you just, like, well, stick okay. in the or something? Here's, so here's my theory, all right? So this is this is part of why I, I have a lot of fun when we do these things. First of all, Fist picks the articles, which I... I'm all about that. I think that's awesome. I think that's a really great idea because this has just has a nose for what's funny, you guys. I do. Hence, hence this like first article because I'm okay. Hold on, let me close this real doll site because they're looking at me. All right, so I have a theory about this. Um, if you need to dispose of a body, a real body? No, just a body. Like, where the fuck? do you dispose of a body from like where two i guess i should say where do you which one of any normal human being who's not a murderer would know how to dispose of a body and in essence that's what you're doing with this 
So if you just walk right outside, doo -doo -doo, just dump in the body of the dumpster, like, you're getting the fucking cops called on you now. <laughs> What's happening That's right so now? Stupid. No, it's so stupid because, like, those dolls, like, you could legit sell one of those used dolls on Craigslist and somebody would snatch that shit up for, like, a thousand bucks, no problem. People are crazy about these things. Like, even if it is used, they just send it to that dude, they get some new junk, it's like, you know, a whole new doll. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, obviously they didn't know about this guy. Oh, whoever did this was ridiculous. Also, maybe it's, like, maybe it's, like, some living guy who like lives with his parents or something like that and they found it oh, yeah. you know, they're older this is unacceptable to them and uh you know they have to you know uh, old old franny is not okay with that and she's like gary get rid of the body get rid of the body gary Randy, gary they don't want that that shit in their house you know like how, how can it's you like that him? beastie boy song and your mom threw away your best porno doll <laughs> It cost like five thousand dollars. Anyway, yeah. this guy's dumb. Let's move on. Okay. Okay. Florida man's nude yard work habit draws the ire of neighbors. <laughs> neighbors are complaining about a Florida man who's apparently getting a little too comfortable in the area. They claim the man, who lives in Stewart, frequently does outdoor chores completely nude, and witnesses <laughs> of the nudity say they've seen enough. He works on his car and he does it naked and everyone has to call the has called the police. He's just out there doing yard work. Naked. Melissa Nye, one of his the man's neighbors, told the news. Charlie Estes, another neighbor, voiced concerns about kids potentially seeing the naked man. Have some respect. Kids catch the bus here. It's wrong, he added. Indecent exposure is illegal in public places in the state, but while some may be disturbed by the man's choice to go nude, officials with the Martin County Sheriff's Office previously told the news that they're unable to take any action against him because the man is on private property and is <laughs> not touching himself inappropriately. <laughs> um, the Sheriff's Office told the news on Wednesday that authorities are currently in the process of obtaining a warrant to arrest the man if he is spotted nude again, and they're putting a case together. Um, so they might have a case since he's in the front yard sometimes um, so this is this is tough for me because like it's his property and he's not touching himself right. inappropriately but at the same time like that probably would disturb a kid you know like that would that would be something that you would never forget if you were a little kid and you saw like a dude naked like mowing his lawn or well think of it this way your first exposure to nudity as a child or a young person however whatever form that takes and if it sounds like i'm being inappropriate what i mean is everybody at some point in their life runs into nudity of another human being that's what i'm referring to not anything inappropriate i found in my dad's case, nudie deck of cards was that the first time that you like saw another human being naked though? I don't know, but I was fascinated. I'd never <laughs> seen boobs before. The deck of cards? Yeah, and it just had like chicks on the back, like numbers nice. on the front and chicks on the back. Nice. Every card's a face card, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, uh, no, so I just mean like the first time that you see nudity as a kid or or like and every time that you might see nudity as you're growing up that has an impact you know like that's something memorable that's a, that's a unusual right right so in this case with somebody you know just being naked um you know especially if they're doing like if if they're just out in the open like this isn't something where like somebody left their window open and you walked by and you're like oh he's naked in there and i can see it this is somebody who's just outright doesn't care let it all fly in the wind kind of thing you know yeah so um i can imagine that people would be upset about that now there is a weird thing about the private property thing because he is on this private property showing his privates on his property right? right but his front yard like that's a weird situation and i feel like there are usually laws that clarify where you can be nude on your own property right like, if it, was, purpose, if it was strictly his backyard, and if his backyard had, like, adequate bushes and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I don't know, like, I wouldn't be that mad, you know? I wouldn't care, whatever. Um, but, yeah, like, out in the front yard. And, like, I always thought, like, doing that kind of stuff naked 
would be really uncomfortable. Like, can you imagine, like, hedge trimming naked? I mean, that, that's the worst part is, like, the activities. He was, like, working on his car yeah. and doing yard work. Like, that's... Those are dangerous activities to be doing with your private parts exposed. That's a, a concern. Yeah, like, you get, like, scratches all over your skin and right. your body, and then you get, like... You know when you rub up against, like, different plants and you get, like, irritated and stuff? I don't know. It yeah. just doesn't... It doesn't sound good, but I think, like, some people can, like, separate, like, nudity from, like, you know, sex. And I guess I can't, you know? Because, like, it'd be really hard to be turned on when you're working on your car or hedge trimming, you know? Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, like, the you, the part you mentioned about the scratches and stuff like that, that's absolutely happening no matter what activity you're oh, doing. Yeah. If you're working on the car, you got to lean over the hood or you got to crawl underneath. Like, you're making contact. Contact. That's right. Nude tact. Yeah, this guy's definitely on a one-way track to getting arrested. Yeah. Apparently, he don't care, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> I love that it's like... It's not... Like, you you might think, like, oh, easy... Easy case closed, right? Like, he's... The guy's naked, yeah. so that shouldn't be okay. Except... Well, I almost jokingly said, one, it's Florida, and two, like, except that you can't say that. Like, in the U.S., there's a a bit of a running joke that the crazy shit happens in Florida. But that's only because Florida can release all of this information, right? Exactly. 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 So the fact that just, like, they have different laws about releasing people's information about public... The public records are more public in Florida, so you hear a lot more of this stuff. I would not be surprised if there's a nude guy case going on right now in some other state as well. Oh, definitely. People <laughs> just, just want to be nude. Out. And you know what? <laughs> like, I don't know. I just wish I could be the sort of person who didn't like didn't care, you know? Like, I would care about rules and, like, offending people and, and, you know, going about it legally and stuff. But wouldn't it be great if you just didn't care if you were, like, clothed or not? God, that must be amazing. And, like, I can't even, like, do that in my own house while I'm alone, you know? Like, I don't want to... Like, we are having this conversation in Raid last night, like... Like, not wearing pants or underpants when you're at home. Like, you don't want to put your own junk on stuff, you know? <laughs> like, I wouldn't want to, like, put... Like, sit down on my chair and game, you know? And then... Why? Why not? Because, like, my butt's touching. stuff. My butt's touching. But then, like, what if somebody comes over and they sit down in my chair? And I'm like, oh, my ass was on that, by the way. I just assume that whoever's house I'm at, their ass has been all over everything. I don't assume that at all. Hmm. Maybe you should. Maybe I should. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> West Virginia man allegedly huffed paint and beat mother with spatula. <laughs> There's a really great photo of him, by the way. <laughs> Is he holding his spatula? No. Um, I'll link it after I read this. Okay. A man in West Virginia was arrested Friday for allegedly huffing spray paint and then beating his mother with a spatula, according to local news reports. Glenn Kasdorf, a 30-year-old who's reportedly known to local authorities for sniffing spray paint, so he's known for this, was taken into custody after St. Albans police responded to reports of a domestic incident around 10.45 p.m. on Thursday, reporting citing a criminal complaint. When the officer arrived at the scene, Kasdorf was repeatedly sitting reportedly sitting in the front yard with his face and hands covered in spray paint holding a large steel bar. Kasdorf was detained and an officer found the man's <laughs> mother inside the home with her head wrapped in gauze along with a large amount of blood on her shirt and the back of her neck, according to the report. Um, online records indicate Kasdorf is being held at South Regional Jail in Charleston on $10,000 bail or 10% cash. So, Damn! Yeah. He beat the shit out of her with that spatula. That's kind of insane. I mean, okay, the the, okay, the part right. where he beat up his mother to the point where she's bleeding, that's not cool. But I think it's interesting that, like, he's known for huffing paint. You guys gotta click this. You gotta see this guy's face. Like, he's literally <laughs> covered in spray paint, like, around his mouth. Oh, my God. He looks like one of the people from that, um, that remake of Mad Max. In the, if you guys haven't seen it in the Mad Max movie, this is not a spoiler. In the Mad Max movie, they take a drug that like is like an amphetamine, kind of like makes them nuts, and they spray it all over their mouth and nose and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's again like it's not That's cool amazing. to beat up his mom, but like he used a spatula, and like I don't even have a metal spatula. I think mine's plastic. I mean that doesn't 
it's neither here nor there, but still. I, mean, I guess I, I didn't, I've only had the plastic kind, so I'd never thought of it being a metal spatula. Of course, that would really help a lot more. Holy shit. Well, could, I don't know, like, could you beat somebody so much with, like, a plastic? You know what? That's, that's a scientific question we'll never know the answer to. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. This guy, he's got, I mean, clearly he's got a problem. Um, but, like, his poor mom. I know. And, like, why didn't he get, like, orange spray paint? Because then nobody would know. Orange? Oh, because he's ginger? Yeah. He's <laughs> sprayed all over his face. I don't know. <laughs> we just is like, is that TJ Miller? <laughs> <laughs> do you think, like, I was watching, do you guys watch that show? Or I don't even know if it's still on or not. I was like, My Strange Addiction or something like that. I love that show, by the way. I'm so into all this weird shit. But like my favorite, my favorite episode is the one where the dude talks about being in love with his car. But that's not what I was getting at. There was um, there's an episode where this girl eats nail polish, uh. and she she was talking about like how the glittery ones taste better than the like cream ones. And I'm oh. wondering like, like I know tasting and huffing is different. I'm not sure how, but I'm pretty sure that it is. But like, do you think there's like a color or like? A texture that's more delicious than others I don't know. or like works better I, than others I cannot imagine I, don't I know. cannot imagine especially like when it's a chemical based you know yeah I guess it makes sense because it's chemical based I guess you'll just have to but try like, it no okay I'm not doing that that was a good one though okay. that was a good one good fine all right here we go <clears throat> Kentucky woman defecated on deputy to resist arrest, cops say. <laughs> um. <laughs> Talk about defense mechanisms. <laughs> right? Police in Livingston, Kentucky said a woman intentionally defecated on an officer to avoid being arrested. Amanda Peters, 26, was arrested around 2 a.m. on Saturday at her home. Online records showed she had been wanted on an outstanding warrant in her neighborhood. Um, when the home of homeowner let officers in, Peters reportedly locked herself in a bathroom a responding deputy forced himself into the bathroom and arrested the woman with force. That's when police allege Peters intentionally released her bowels in an upward motion and with purposeful direction at this deputy, causing said bodily <laughs> waste to land on the face, arms, and legs of the deputy. Online records shows Peter was, Peters was charged with resisting arrest, third-degree assault of an officer, identity theft, and of another without consent, giving an officer <laughs> false identifying information and theft by unlawful taking or disposition of $10,000 or more. <laughs> okay, so, so some of those are obviously related to, like, other things that she did, but holy shit. Okay, look, can I just, again, Peters intentionally released her bowels <laughs> Thank you for repeating in an part. upward motion <laughs> and with purposeful direction at this deputy causing said bodily waste to land on the face, arms, and legs of the deputy. So... I gotta tell you, that sounds impressive. I'm thinking of Tub Girl. Do you guys remember Tub Girl from back in the day of the internet? No. Uh, Girl? not safe for work, just Google Tub Girl. Okay. You will find it. Alright, but I, I just want to go back, because while you're reading this, chat was on fire no. their responses to this include that's crappy <laughs> I'll have to put up with this shit you gotta go you gotta go that one is more common than you would think which is cousin Michael what's up cousin Mike <laughs> um wouldn't that be assault and poopery <laughs> poopery she got the shit scared out of her, literally. Could I, I mean, could be? Simeon re reflex response. <laughs> well, that's a strategy. Two girls, one <laughs> cup. Oh god, tub girl nightmares. Like, this is... The chat's on fire with this one. <laughs> For instance, it's called rooster tailing. <laughs> <laughs> Upward and with force and purposeful direction or something, like, right? I just... Okay. Can you read that part again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's so good. I feel like I want to so get good. up and like act it out because I don't understand. Intentionally released her bowels in an upward motion and with purposeful direction at the deputy, causing said bodily waste to land on the face, arms, and legs of the deputy. So she like, had aim even. Exactly. Like 
like no matter okay regardless of the situation let's just say that you had to poop on somebody to get away or to <laughs> deter them from hurting you or something you know like <laughs> it's literally her last line of defense well i mean you know sometimes that's that's all you can do like uh like the um the turkey vulture, for example, their wingspan is so large that it's hard for them to take off in a timely manner. So when they do come to land and like eat, um, you know, carcasses and stuff like that, it takes them a while to build up enough speed and enough flapping to get airborne. So one of their uh, um, sort of defense mechanisms is barfing up all of the rotten flesh that they've just eaten all over themselves. Mm. Um, you know, and that, and that would deter uh, a predator because they literally smell like the vomit of somebody who's eaten right. like disease meat. Anyway, that's that's some bird <laughs> lore for you. So, not lore because that's you are now subscribed to bird facts. Yeah, get some bird facts. Anyway, what was I saying? Right. So, if you had to poop on somebody as your last line of defense, like, <laughs> is that like adrenaline taking over and like you suddenly know? what to do and like how to aim like you become like this like weird like you know how like when adrenaline like helps you think of something really quick or like, helps you like child lift, or yeah exactly lift the car like would adrenaline suddenly give you like the <laughs> oh you how to just like bend over and shoot poop like up <laughs> and purposefully at somebody that would get all over them and it's interesting that like she hit the face and the arms and the legs but not the torso because that's like that's where <laughs> i would think that she would be you know getting it or maybe she like on a shoe or something. Yeeted it. she yeeted so hard like she she, this shit that, out of that deputy got yoded okay <laughs> this bitch empty now yeet you know <laughs> but, like i had a hamster and like <laughs> If he got scared when I was holding him, he'd just evacuate his bowels and I'd have little, like, hamster poo all over me. But it's not like he turned around and shot it at my face, you know? Like, he just, you know, just pooped normally, but, like... <laughs> I just, I just don't get it. I really... Hold on, can we take another break for... for, for chat fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One second, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Alright, you guys aren't supposed to make me cry on stream, alright? <laughs> I can't poop like that, Techie. I've tried. I haven't tried. Is the deputy a poopy head now? <laughs> this is the reason I won't ever go back to Rotten.com. That was Techie Taco. <laughs> Did she eat chunky peanut butter beforehand? Aww. Projectile poopage. The Winchesters took me over the over the edge. I pro I picture it arcing through the air and hits the face of the cop. Then Bin Bash is like, "What a shithead!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <sighs> what it a shitty like, cop. <laughs> like, the turtle game comes to mind, does it not? It's like <laughs> you're pooping, but like you gotta. Like, how would you angle your ass like that? Like, you would have to literally bend over and put your leg, your head near your ankles to, you know? Like, it doesn't, as far as I know, like, poop doesn't have a trajectory like that. Like, you'd have right. to push really hard. And that's why I'm thinking, like, the adrenaline coming in or something, but like... And that that's why, I'm, that's why I'm so in love with chat right now, because they're thinking through these same things. They're like, they're on the same wavelength. I'm pretty sure she had Taco Bell early in the day. Uh, I don't like going in front of people, but okay. Oh, um, I love Taco Bell. There's no way it was so here's cousin Mike. There's no way it was solid. It had to be some sort of sort of liquid lubrication to get that velocity. Michael and then again, Winchester sent me over the edge with Kareem Abdudu Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Michael was the first person to show me Rotten.com, and he showed me a hand, like a severed hand, and then that hand was like cut in half. It was gross, Mike. Ow. I still remember that. It was gross. Question is, does cousin Mike remember that? Okay, telepunesis. Turtle has made it to the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is amazing. Yeah. Anyway, Custer's I... last squat. <laughs> it's not the last line of defense. It's the ass line of defense. <laughs> you guys are so much funnier than Custer's we are. Custer's ass stand. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, okay. Alright, sorry, I can read these all night. Sorry guys. Nice, I'll come back and look at the rest later. You guys are amazing. Um, but yeah, I... I... I don't good know. Good pick. Holy shit, that's a good article. I think, like, later on, I'm gonna... Not poop. But just sort of put my body into a position where I feel like it could... I just, I just don't get it. I, I need to act like, it out. I get you. Like, that's the part that's still fucking yeah, with like, me. Yeah, like, how? Like, okay, I picture, you know, when people, like, bend over and they put their arms inside their legs so like legs yeah. on the outside because you like have that. to have you you wouldn't have like any cheek blockage would hinder this you know like it has to be spread like, you got to spread those buns you got to open up shop you know <laughs> do you think Presley's that she like, used her oh, no, hands or something out. like i don't know <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous Real shit wizard, bringing it back around again. Oh my god, this is so good. I don't know. I don't know. That's the part that keeps fucking with me as well. Because all I can picture is somebody bent over like that, hands firmly clamped to the ankles. Like, do you think she practices this? No, like, I how think, do you aim? No, I think that it's adrenaline. I think that it was a fight or flight moment and she chose to <laughs> she take chose a massive shit. duke on this cop, <laughs> yeah. Fight, flight, or poop. There's a third option now. Or does I mean, that count as just, fighting? I mean, that's kind of like fighting. And she definitely won. <laughs> Alright, I'm moving on. This is amazing. I'm getting confused. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good choice. Thanks. Okay, so... This one kind of freaks me out as a dog owner. But it's not... It's The, the dog's okay. Dog owner who used a pet sitting service says he found shirtless men and lube in the living room. Jesus. A dog owner in Colorado claims that when he used a dog sitting service to care for his dog while he was away, he came home to find shirtless men, a bottle of lubricant, and a camera in his living room. Um, Kellett Keller of Colorado Springs told the news that upon his return home on Monday around 1 a.m., he came home to several strange things and his dog nowhere in visible sight. Two shirtless men were sitting in his living room couch. When he asked them to leave, he noticed there was an open bottle of personal lubricant and a camcorder on the end table. Jimbo, oh Keller's dog, God. was reportedly found locked inside of a bedroom where he was sitting in his own urine. That's when I would kill those guys. But anyway, yeah. Um, he says it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on. There is also what I can only assume are bodily fluids on the couch. The unidentified uh. dog sitter, who Keller said who said he learned was showering in his house when he got home, told the news station that she didn't have any knowledge of bodily fluids on the couch. She added that she used the lubricant to remove her keys, which were stuck in her car. Uh, she said, so I ended up grabbing what I had in my car for things that you know I do on my personal time, and I didn't think to put them back in my car. Um, Keller said the scene was just a total mess, and I can only imagine what poor Jimbo saw in there. Um, Wag, the dog sitting service which Keller used, uh, to find somebody to watch his pup, told Fox News that they launched an investigation into what allegedly took place in Keller's home and have suspended the dog sitter. Good, good, good. First of all, that sucks for the business because, like, that's clearly somebody taking advantage of people's houses. Yeah. They're like, how can I use other people's spaces? Well, I could be a dog sitter. They'll let me in a, a, rent a variety of places every day, and then I could just hop on Tinder, Grinder, whatever, and have happy fun times. Right? <laughs> and just... Like, coming into your house and, like, your your sitter, like, number one, using your shower. Number two, having invited people over. Yeah. Like, that's enough, you know? It's like, yeah. hey, what the fuck, dude? Like, get the Already over the line. Yeah. But not only that, but, like, they're shirtless. There's stuff on the couch now. There's lube. And, like, even the lube is, like, okay. Obviously, you guys were jerking each other off. But... The camcorder, like, that's what cinches it, you know? Like, that, yeah. to me, is, like, like two dudes and a chick and some lube. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. You know, I know what's happening. She's in the shower. There's stuff on the couch. I get it, you know? Yeah. But the camcorder, that's like, okay, now we're in creepy town. <laughs> like, were you using my apartment for porn? Were you using it to, you know, just... Like, is, is your couch at your place so crusty now that you have to go to mine? Like, And in the meantime, they didn't even actually take care of the fucking dog. Exactly. I mean, first of all, 
Thank you for starting that story by indicating that it had nothing to do of with course. the dog, and the dog was fine. A, the dog having to pee or poop in its own room on on a single day or something like that is not the end of the world. It's not good treatment of that dog. I don't condone it. Fuck those guys. But like, at least the dog was not involved in any way because that would yeah. not be obviously. First of all, that's not be, that would not even be a story you'd pick for this. Uh, because I know you, and you wouldn't of course. even want to know that that's happening. But thank God that that's not part of it, for one. For two, but, like, even if you're going to do this, like, you can't even actually do the one thing that you're actually contracted to do, which is to take the dog out and make sure that right. it can, you know, do its business. Like, you got to go and take advantage of the situation to the extreme and then still not just do that one little thing. Because taking your dog out is, like, five minutes. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I just... Ugh. That's why I don't trust anybody with my pets. <laughs> or in my house. Or anybody at all. I'm just kidding. Um, well, Thorn, I, I picked this next one for you. Oh, boy. Because I know that you like this. This might hit you personally. I'm not sure. Uh, Georgia Thieves escape with nearly $100,000 worth of ramen noodles. Thieves in Georgia must have been craving a savory snack as they made <laughs> up with nearly $100,000 worth of ramen noodles. The thieves, who have not yet been located, took the packages of noodles between July 21st and August 1st. <laughs> the noodles were located inside a 53-foot trailer, which was parked at a Chevron store. The owner of the trailer, who said he was given permission to park the trailer there, said it was locked at the time and the food was allegedly stolen. The ramen incident is just one in a series of thefts that authorities think are related. I don't. I don't know. This is this is a bad story. I don't know what this is about. I don't. We should go to the next one. Because <laughs> Mike's like, is that not all the noodles? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be like that? Would be like all of the ramen noodles? Oh god, yeah. It was. They said it was like a, however many feet truck. Fifty three. That's a. Yeah. Fuck ton. The 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 measure. Of the amount of ramen noodles in that truck is a fuck ton. That's how. That's the. the, the It'd term. probably be really light to pick up though. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, like hoist those bad boys, take them somewhere. Yeah. But like these guys, apparently have been stealing other stuff too, and like I they haven't know been. What else fun. is on the list? No, like what would like? Okay, you got your ramen noodles. Now what do you need? Well, you'd need dessert, so you gotta steal a little W truck, right? Sure. Gotta um, have your whole house. Is that a thing? <laughs> yep. Okay, good. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, let's see. Um, you'd probably, if you're me, you'd want Cheez-Its, and you'd want Sriracha. So you'd go to steal a Cheez-It truck and steal a Sriracha truck. Though, if I gotta be, if I gotta be honest, one bottle of Sriracha lasts quite a long time. So. That's true. I Do you think it would long. last one hundred thousand dollars worth of ramen long? I mean, maybe. I mean, I, yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Side story, unrelated. There's a town, I believe it was in California, that um, like lobbied really hard with the, with the Sriracha company for it to open its like latest factory or warehouse or production facility in their town in California. Because, you know, a opening of a big facility like that creates a lot of jobs, brings a lot of commerce to the town. It's good for a town, for a big brand like that to come through. So a year or two passes and they cannot wait and they're lobbying just as hard to get them out again because of the smell. Oh. Because a production facility for something like that absolutely stank. What would it smell like though? I mean, it's a lot of um, spices. Right. So, you know, it, I don't know exactly how it would smell in production because things don't always smell like the final result while they're in production. Some things do. Like I lived near like a candy factory and it always smell like chocolate. Oh. Um, sometimes when I come out of my work now, it smells like um, uh, fruity pebbles for some reason. Oh, I don't yeah. know what the hell's going on with that. That has nothing to do with my job. But um, but yeah, you know, like Beetlejuice says, it's sriracha is made from people. So, you know, it just smells like burnt people. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, well, I don't think that we're ever going to find all that ramen. I, think I have a feeling it's gone. been well distributed by now. I'm sorry, what? I hope that they, like, Robin Hooded that thing, you know? Yeah. 
Like stole all the ramen and just like gave it to the just needy. Yeeted it into the yeah low income housing or something. <laughs> just just eat it. All right, millennials outraged after baseball team advertises millennial night with avocados, participation ribbons, and napping stations. <laughs> Uh, outrage. What does millennial outrage look like? I'm kind of outraged, but you know, <laughs> I'm too I'm too lazy to do anything about it. Oh, oh, oh. Um, according to one Alabama minor league baseball team, those are the pillars for life for people born between the 1980s and the early 2000s, along with avocados, craft beer, and safe spaces. <laughs> um, in an effort to bring younger fans to the ballpark, the Montgomery Biscuits are hosting a millennial night this weekend, but their advertising on social media set off an eruption of mixed feedback from the very group they're trying to attract. The Tampa Bay Rays double A affiliate currently with a blah, 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 tweeted last week, we want free things without doing much work. Well, you're in luck. Riverwalk Stadium will be a millennial friendly on Saturday, blah, 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 with partition ribbon given away just for showing up, napping in selfie stations, <laughs> along with lots of avocados. Come on. You don't um, appeal to a group by insulting them. <laughs> No, to be fair, those are funny. Like, I think maybe they were That's thinking not funny. That they would take that in. Come on, don't you think they'd take that in? Like, well, listen, I I don't think it's funny either, but I think that they thought it was funny. But I can't believe that they would think it was funny to that group. I think that they would think it's funny to like the generation before that makes fun of that. Yeah, it sucks that people make fun of people from when they were born. Yeah, because they totally had so much control over it. But like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm honestly not outraged, but I just, I think it's, it's interesting. Like, <laughs> like what if, what if, what if they had like a, like a baby boomers night and then they offered like disposable diapers and Xanax or, <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know anything about baby boomers. I don't know, but Dazzle Dorn says they should give out crushing college educational debt. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Just, that's that's just, perfect. Yeah, thanks. Just hand that over to me on the way in. I really do love taking selfies, and I really do love avocado toast, and I really do love taking naps. You know? <laughs> Maybe just because it hits home so hard for me as a millennial, it's like, hey, man, that's, that's me. Don't, you know, I don't want to watch baseball. Maybe that's it. It's like, T-Sports is so dead that they're, like, trying to attract millennials but it's like literally we can just eat avocado at home in our safe spaces <laughs> and have a nap and take selfies in our bathrooms where the good lighting is and you know watch <laughs> esports instead of t-sports because t-sports is dead games i gotta say you know i i feel like going to a baseball game is the nap zone this baseball is boring as fuck it's true just my opinion I don't know. I'm I'm just saying, T Sports dead game. You know what? The other thing is, it might have been a PR stunt because. Oh, it totally was. It totally was. Well, I mean, because the article says, you know, they draw the ire of millennials, the same group that they were trying to attract. Clearly not. That's true. I don't know. You can't make fun of anybody these days without anybody getting offended. Yeah, look at Drew, getting all offended because he likes mm -hmm. baseball. So what, Drew? Oh. Baseball's T sports dead game. Fight me. Um, fight her. Yeah, fight me. Florida woman arrested after pet spider monkey allegedly attacks Home Depot employees. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Can you read that again? Florida woman arrested after pet spider monkey allegedly attacks Home Depot employees. <laughs> okay, can I take a guess at this one? Yes. Let me um let me unpack this a little bit. So this woman's upset um, because she went to Home Depot, um, and I'm gonna, definitely going to need to hear the story because what I don't understand is why is her spider monkey there with her? Because it's her pet. I know, but like, it, there's very few pets that you could take to too many places commonly, right? So you can take like dogs you can to take, Home Depot. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's, but. It, there's a lot of places you can't take a dog either. And a dog is a very common domesticated animal, like man's best friend. This is a spider monkey. Okay, I gotta hear this one. Tell, tell me what the actual story is, please. Woman whose pet spider monkey allegedly attacked two Home Depot employees in separate incidents has been arrested. <laughs> so this happened twice. <laughs> T 
Tina Ballard was arrested Monday in Linville Land Harbor. Police officers in North Carolina reported and is slated to be extradited back to Okeechobee County. The news comes after the monkey, Spanky, reportedly jumped out of a shopping cart and grabbed a Home Depot cashier's shirt, leaving red marks on the cashier's shoulder and back. Uh, the incident was not reported to wildlife officials at the time. In oh early God. June, another Home Depot employee claimed she was attacked by Spanky after she noticed the monkey roaming the store's parking lot with a leash on. Howard approached Spanky, <laughs> which... She's got a leash, but it's just roaming free anyway. Yeah, she tried. <laughs> Uh, she approached Spanky, which allegedly escaped from Ballard's truck while she was shopping inside. While trying to find its owner, Spanky was spooked by the store's sliding doors, prompting it to jump onto the employee and bite her arm. It also reportedly grabbed her hair and lunged off the side of her body, landing in the store's entrance. At that point, Howard panicked and ran after the monkey. She caught it, but not without a fight. The Home Depot employee also suffered scratches and bite marks to her face and body. Um, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, which investigated the second incident, later filed charges against Ballard, which include allowing a wild animal to escape, among others. Um, so this monkey um, is going to be sent to a primate sanctuary. Good. So that's good, because um, obviously, like, you know, civilians yes. shouldn't be owning wild animals like that, especially when they clearly can't take care of them. But uh, I just, like... Why Home Depot in particular? Like, why did this happen at Home Depot twice? Like, like does she only take the monkey to Home Depot? Or, like, is it just, like, kind of unlucky for people who work at Home Depot that this monkey was there and that the monkey was angry? And, like, if you saw a spider monkey run into Home Depot, whether you work there or not, would you go after it? Like, would you try to catch a spider monkey? Because I would not. I'm not about that. Like, I I'm not touching a monkey. I would call animal control. <laughs> yeah, no, I would probably just pretend I never saw anything and leave. Because I'm really Chat's responsible. Chat's all over this one, by the way. Chat is really loving this story right now. The mo poor Spanky. I mean, it's it's a happy Spanky ending. Spanky the monkey. It's, <laughs> it's a happy ending for Spanky because like he no longer <laughs> has to be going to. And do you remember when your parents would take you to a fucking hardware store when you're a kid and you're just like, boring. this is the most boring. It's almost as bad as a furniture store. Like, this is the most boring because there's literally nothing cool at a hardware store when you're a kid and it's fucking, ugh, you know? That monkey had every right to, like, bite people because, like, not only is he a wild animal but, like, Home Depot? Like, couldn't you take the monkey to, like, I don't know. Starbucks? Like, where where do where do people go that's fun? The monkey bars? I don't know. Yeah. He, he would have fun in a park, though, I mean, if I'm being honest. like, it, Of what? course, I wouldn't want around the kids, but you know what I mean? Like, there are places that might actually make a little bit of sense to take a monkey. Home yeah. Depot is definitely not one of them. I wonder what she was, like, maybe she was building, like, a jungle gym or something. That's part of what Chad said, is they're building, like, a, a treehouse or something for him, and it was a weekend project. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's just so many layers to this story, though. That's what I love about it. I think... And, like, you hit on the first one. Is that, like, clearly this is a multi-incident story. That's my favorite part, because it's just, like, it's literally the same store. It's happened twice in <laughs> and nowhere else, apparently. But this name is Spanky. It's happened more than once. Uh, like, the leash, but wandering freely yeah, in, just... like, a... Well, no, because, like, he escaped from the car. Okay. okay, because so. she left him in the fucking car, too. Like, and, she, and it's a monkey, so obviously, like, a monkey sees you opening the car door, he's gonna learn how to do it, so... I don't know. I'm glad that this woman doesn't have Spanky anymore, that Spanky can live the rest of his life as a monkey in a nice monkey place. Kalfu says that monkey herpes is um, fatal to humans. Oh, Jesus. That's fucked up. Yeah, no, I'm never touching a monkey. I, yeah, I would not. Like, I love all animals and insects and birds and fish and whatever. Like, I love all of them. But there's just something about monkeys and apes that kind of freak me out. And I feel like I could cautiously approach any animal and be, like, relatively calm and okay. But if it was a monkey, I don't think so. They're just, they're too much like people. Like, really strong people. Yeah. It freaks me out. I don't like that. Um. Anyway, um. let's... Okay, um, I don't know which one to end on. And if we still got like another 10 minutes yet. Okay, well, this one's short and then I'll end with a bang. Hot. Wait, 
North Carolina man shoves $100 worth of Walmart steaks down his pants and flees on moped. <laughs> <laughs> man in Nashville, North Carolina was nabbed by authorities on Monday after he allegedly stuffed $100 worth of stolen Walmart steaks down his pants. The alleged thief, identified as Keith Jordan, tried to make a getaway on his moped in the pouring down rain after walking out of the Walmart without paying for the steaks. A photo shared by the sheriff's office, which added that neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night prevented them from apprehending the accused thief, shows at least 10 packages of stolen steaks. Uh, he must have been really hungry, one Facebook user commented. Um, he was going to do a stakeout, another user joked. <laughs> As of Tuesday morning, the Nash County Sheriff's Office post ha posted more than 1,000 reactions and 800 shares. Police have not yet announced formal charges against Jordan. So it's literally pictures. Or I'll share this. <laughs> Cousin Mike says, Keith Jordan, Walmart, moped. That's some redneck Mad Libs for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just literally standing in front of his moped in the rain. In handcuffs. I love this photo of like all the stakes on the hood of the car, and with like, and the hood of the car yeah. is all wet because it was raining. He's just like obviously pissed off that his like master plan oh didn't God. work. The alleged thief, so he's not been convicted, but, but I they just want to start. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know they need to put together the proper, you know, uh, set of circumstances to make sure that you can prosecute and everybody is innocent until proven guilty they have to prove it i just want to say this is one of the ones that's really great because of yet again another really really great title to unpack let me just reread this title to you north carolina man shoves 100 dollars worth of walmart steaks down pants comma flees on moped colon police this the moped part is my favorite part like, he literally, like, it was raining, he drove to Walmart on his moped, he didn't even bring, like, like, a bag, you know, or, like, a tote bag or a backpack, no, he just, like, shoved them all down his pants, and he's just wearing, like, regular baggy jeans. Yeah, they do look a little baggy, but they don't look particularly... <laughs> They're not, like, like, Jinkos or something. If you're gonna <laughs> steal stuff from Walmart, why are you stealing, like, Walmart brand steaks? Like, why wouldn't you steal, like, electronics or something? Like, I just, I don't... And I gotta be honest, a hundred dollars goes a lot further at Walmart, you know? So that was a lot of steaks. Yep. And they're Walmart level steaks too, so they weren't even that expensive. That's a hundred bucks worth of them. That dude had a lot of meat down his pants. For once this guy in his meats. life, probably. But yeah, and I love how the county like sheriff's department like totally shared it on Facebook. Like all of the pictures. Like they didn't they didn't care. Including a picture of his wet jeans. <laughs> like a close-up of the wet yeah, jeans. Yeah, it's like, look how wet the jeans are, lol. Let's revisit chat. That's a meaty story. Where's the beef? He had a date. He was stuffing his pants to impress her. How could they notice? It's just an average day at Wally World. This is what happens when grocery stores start charging for paper bags. <laughs> how would they get the steaks out of his pants? <laughs> he had a meaty build. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he almost got away with it, too. Okay, last one. <laughs> Nude men caught working out at a Planet Fitness. Thought it was judgment-free zone, police say. <laughs> I find this one interesting just because, like, this dude is literally, like, using the tagline for Planet Fitness against them. Okay. Oh, yeah. A man who was caught naked in a Planet Fitness thought he'd get away with it because the gym considers itself a judgment-free zone, officials said. Eric Stagno, 34, of Massachusetts, was arrested on Sunday at a gym after gym goers allegedly caught him exercising in the nude. Um, the police were dispatched to the Planet Fitness location after receiving a call from witnesses that sim similarly said, the guy walked in, stripped down right there in front, left his clothes and belongings at the front desk, walked back and forth across the gym a couple times, and then settled in over at the yoga mat. The police captain added that Stagno was a, in a yoga type pose when the authorities arrived. Stagno said he thought he he thought it was a judgment-free zone, apparently referencing the gym's slogan. Gym goers <laughs> reported feeling sick, unsafe, and disgusted by Stagno's alleged reactions. 
Stegna was taken into custody without incident and charged with indecent exposure, lewdness, and disorderly conduct, according to the news outlet. Um, so... I'm just... Okay, like... <laughs> I'm imagining being at the gym. I'm on the treadmill, I'm on the elliptical, whatever. And dude comes in and, like... He doesn't even go to the change room. Like, that's what... I think that's what's hanging... Like, I'm, I'm hung up on this one detail... Why would he not go to the change room to put his stuff in a locker, you know, or at least on the sink or something? Huh? It, he went to the front desk. That's where he got nude, and that's where he left his stuff, his clothing and his belongings. Like, why wouldn't you just go to the... the? Because damn the man. But, like, how bold, you know? Like, obviously you have to be kind of bold to, like... Oh yeah, you know, cash in on a slogan and then go in naked and like do yoga <laughs> at a public gym. But like to leave your stuff and then to assume that the people at the front desk are gonna watch your stuff, right? Like yeah. that's the part that's tripping me up here. It's just like, like I where can't did he keep his keys. Exactly, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't enjoy this naked man story because I'm just I'm. Anyway, I'll try to get past <laughs> it. Okay, <laughs> so I just love that somebody was so. Like you, my first thought, like you nailed with your comment about it to begin with, like using their no, judgment free zone thing against them. Like, it's one thing to do something shocking to like challenge that. And, and it's honestly like it's another thing to do something even extreme to challenge that, but like completely nude, like that's way over the top. Like, <laughs> what do you think was going to yeah, happen? And it's like, yeah, we won't judge your nude body but we are going to arrest you, you know? Like, there's a difference between, like, judging someone and arresting somebody, you know? It's like, I'm not going to judge you for breaking the law, fine, but I absolutely will arrest you for breaking yeah. the law, so... Also, like, let's... This is related to the yard-working car story, right? There are things you don't want to do naked. Yeah, like... Working out is definitely something you do not want to be doing naked. I would definitely not want to put my naked junk on like exercise machines and yoga mats because people do not wipe that, that stuff down. That, that is gross. And I'm not even thinking. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking of just natural motion. I was thinking of like the him being on a stairmaster or or a fucking treadmill or something like that. Listen, I'm not gonna brag, but I got a little something going on down there, and I, I want that stuff secured while I'm moving because. I don't. I don't need stuff bouncing around, you know. No, I, I need. I need. I need the package secured for transit. You know what I'm saying? Transit. Yes. Also, Chad is <laughs> killing it on this one again. It's always the fucking yoga people. He is a hero. He was practicing his yoga poses in case he needs to shit on a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Downward facing dong. <laughs> Nut tree pose. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> Chad is just destroying it tonight. My God. Yeah. Um. What do you think he was thinking, Fist? Like, what? What do you think was the? Obviously, he's challenging the, the, tagline. But like, to toward what end? See, I don't know if he actually believed in what he was doing, or if he was just looking for a loophole to be, you know, because like you know there are trolls IRL that want to do stuff like that, you know, for the shock value or just for the hell of yeah. it to elicit a reaction. And, like, this guy probably was, like, walking past this gym and he saw no judgment zone and he thought, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I walked in naked because they can't judge me? And in his head that he sort of flipped it as, like, I won't get in trouble or something like that. Like, I've found the ultimate loophole. I can finally get naked at a gym like I always wanted to. Or <laughs> he legitimately was under the impression that he would not be judged for being naked in this gym and therefore it is okay to be naked at the gym. And, like... I think maybe it's the latter because it said that he walked back and forth a few times and then went to a mat or a mat on the ground. So like I'm thinking like, you know, instead of going for a regular gym experience, putting his stuff in the locker room, then coming out and getting on a machine or doing stretches or something like that, he like and like in all the gyms that I've been in, like the front desk is pretty visible by most people. Oh yeah. So he literally like walks in takes off his clothes, leaves his shit at the front desk, walks back and forth so everybody gets a good look at, you know, what's going on, <laughs> and then goes to a, a you know, a, a, a mat and starts doing yoga. I so wonder if he was an exhibitionist. I wonder if the experience was arousing for him or if he was just... 
I feel like regular naked. If he was aroused <laughs> by it, that probably would have been included in the police report. Yeah, maybe. Did they did they include in the report? Maybe I missed it. Whether he was a member or not? No, they didn't say that. <laughs> But, like, obviously he wasn't I mean, wearing a badge or anything, so... Like, clearly they weren't stopping to scan anything. <laughs> yeah, what could, they, what could they scan? They might be able to swipe a few things, but... It was a butt crack joke. Don't laugh, it's fine. Um, but it yeah, so... Me that you were trying to analyze the decision-making process of Naked Man at Planet Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> fair? Fair. I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, okay, well, that's a show. Um, I do believe our good friend Ro is on the Azeroth round table tonight, so we should definitely move over there. But uh, before we do that, we just want to thank there. you guys so much for watching um, a new episode of the actual Lagging Balls podcast, LB Proper, that is about Blizzard games. We'll be dropping Monday, Tuesday morning type deal. Um, but yeah, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, if you guys figure out the whole like, Goop no. projectile thing. Let me know. Shoot me a DM. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do some like posing in my bathroom and see if I can come up with something. Not actually, you know, doing it, but you know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna do anything. Fair, right? Uh, well, let me just say I don't know uh, if Azrael around table is on. They don't appear to be. Live. Oh, good. So we can keep talking. Um, <laughs> I mean, seagulls on. Oh yeah, so we won't raid over there yet. So, um, what else is going on with LB? Um, our uh, contest to give away one free year of WoW and two different six-month free WoW stuff that's coming to an end um, probably Monday. Yeah. So if you haven't entered that, um, please do. You can enter that by sending us an email at laggingballs at gmail.com telling us why you or somebody you know really, really deserves a free year or six months of World of Warcraft. Um, and yep. we are going to look all over, look all over, look over all of the uh, submissions this weekend. Um, it's going to be like one of the hardest things we've ever had to do, no pun intended, um, trying to pick the three lucky people winning this. Um, hopefully we can do another competition like this at some point and give away more stuff but um in the meantime uh three people will win we'll be announcing those people on the show but we will not be reading any submissions that's the thing it's all anonymous so you can like the submissions that i've got so far are, like super heartfelt there's a lot of like very personal information and lots of insane stories that are really uh tear jerking and stuff like that um we won't read any of that three people total will see it that's uh, Thorn and I and the person giving away the uh, the free year of WoW. Um, so yeah, so if you want to do that, just email laggingballs.gmail.com and tell us why you need it. And maybe you'll get it. Um, what else? <clears throat> um, ooh, um, we are on two, two podcasts. We're recording two podcasts tomorrow that aren't ours. And I don't know if I can say what they are yet. Or did I already? I think you did on the podcast. I, I already so. did. Yeah, you did. I don't know if I was allowed to or not, so maybe I won't do it again this time. But, uh... And then I recorded a podcast with my friend Hammond today, earlier today, that was not about... Wrecking Ball? No. But his name is also Hammond. Ah. Yeah. That was fun. It was another soundtrack podcast. Um, I had a phone call from Mr. Pat Crane today. Ah, uh, yes. How was Mr. Pat Crane? He is in his new house... He is... Um, He's not... It doesn't have, like, a front yard where he does yard work and works on his car, does it? Not yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, watching no, for that? Uh, well, not watching. He's uh, emptying boxes, but we're going to... We're going to try. This is not set in stone yet, but we're going to try to do a Battle.net news on Tuesday. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can. So I miss doing it. I miss, I miss Pat. I miss CTR. And it was so nice to hear from him. Cause like we chat all the time, of course, but like, I haven't heard his voice in like a week or two at this point. Yeah. And it's just like weird. So, um, Draven says that I can tell you guys, we are on the Epic Phil podcast tomorrow night. Woo! Um, Draven, that starts at 10, right? 10 PM EST or 11. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, but that's definitely tomorrow night and it's live. So you get to see us again here on Twitch. Um, Draven, feel free to link your stuff in the, if you can. Yeah, you can. Yes. 10, 
That's going to be fun. I'm excited. I think the Epic Fail podcast was the first other podcast we were ever invited to. It's definitely among the first, if not the first. I think it was the first. It was the very because first Because Draven one. has amazing taste. Draven has amazing taste. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody here does. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be, we'll be on that. Uh, we'll be on another show tomorrow. Um, Pat is okay. I think he's alright. When I was talking to him, he was driving to pick up his dogs from their new daycare center. Aww. You know, it's cute, right? Doggy daycare. Um, he's cute. a good dog dad. Um... What else? What are you doing this weekend, Thorn? Um, let's see. Other than those things, we're working on a show, right? We're working on the next podcast yeah, at yeah. some point. Yeah, at some point. Um, I was thinking of going to see a movie because I enjoy doing that. Oh, um, I'm thinking of starting another stream, a movie watching stream. So we'd watch movies on a streaming service, um, not on the stream, because I don't think that Twitch would allow me to display the movie because that's copyrighted content. Um, but we're working on a way to figure that. So more to come um, because it'd just be like a, a chill and watch something together and we'll figure out a way to allow you to see kind of the either the um, timestamp of where we are or have a link to something else or something so that you can participate by watching that and chatting together here. So we'll, we'll see. That's coming uh, relatively soon, the next couple of weeks probably. Um, but it's something I've been thinking about for a very long time. So I'm excited to actually kind of get some traction on it because I think it would be really fun to watch movies with you guys. So um, stay tuned for more. I will. Stay oh, you will. Oh, you will. You will. Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay, Azeroth Roundtable is about to start up, so I think we should just throw on over to yeah, them. Let's go. Um, and what are we gonna say? Poop Jectile? We're gonna say prepare to receive. Yeah, Tub Girl, twenty eighteen. Yeah, guys, have a great weekend. Thank you for watching. We love you. Mwah. Was me blowing kisses. Sounded weird. <laughs>